We live in a modern world where engineering technology advances at a rapid rate and computer technology that 10 years ago cost hundreds of thousands of pounds is now mandatory on every iPhone or Android. This same principle is true in the world of motorcycle rallying. The early days were about passion and determination, sometimes praying a machine would hold together. Now, in 2014, technology allows you to ride faster, for longer periods and with reliability. In this modern world of motorcycle rally, there is a man known as Lyndon Poskett. Working a day job in a very corporate environment at the UK's BAE Systems, he forms part of a skilled team of people who design, build and test state-of-the-art military fighter planes. And when he's not working, he spends his free time spinning spanners and lathes, engineering his own passion, rally bikes. And every now and again, he takes them for a spin. Having ridden some of the most testing two-wheeled events known to man, such as the Baja 1000 and the iconic Dakar Rally, Lyndon knows what it takes to build a machine to get to the finish line. But Lyndon's passion isn't just racing. He's also known for his love of motorcycle adventure. And with this discipline being slightly more relaxed, it means he doesn't always need to ride a full race-spec bike. So here we have a man spending his days in a corporate world, where planning is everything and his free time riding is his passion. I wonder, what happens when this type of man decides he wants to go on a road trip? Does he just pack his tent, head off for the open road? To be honest, like the idea was sort of born maybe late November, um, late November 2013, and then the decision was made on 11, 12, 13, because I remember the day so vividly, and that was the day that I made the decision to do it. Lyndon starts his job with a bare frame, which to most mere mortals would be a scary prospect. <laughs> Uh, I like to do things properly and you know building my own bike I'm so meticulous about it and uh, I think people learn from it people like to see that sort of thing so hopefully this is uh, is just another extension as to what I've done before you know two years ago Lyndon Poskett Racing was set up um, and that was all about my campaign to go and do the Dakar rally and now the Dakar was well the Dakar was a success uh, and I've ticked that box and now we're moving on to something different and I think this is it's a new challenge it is completely uh, different to what I've done before in terms of racing all the time and I think the travelling to places and doing races as well will be just be a fun story to tell and I don't believe anyone has ever done it before so it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> As the build progresses, Lyndon finds the valve shims are not in perfect order. With a keen eye for detail, Lyndon's feeler gauges appear, and shortly afterwards, a new set of shims are sitting comfortably in place. Probably another thing that has been really difficult is uh, selling some of my bikes. You know, I've had a number of bikes that really meant a lot to me from all the racing I've done over the years and uh, I think the reality that I needed to sell some of those to fund what I'm doing now, um, that was quite hard. The blue one you see in the background um, that one's a bike that I've built for a good friend of mine, uh, Rick Atwater, uh, and that's a very unique bike. So that's a 690 Rally, um, but it's built to a lightweight specification, so less fuel, uh, much lighter bike, and it's actually only one in existence. There's only that one in existence, and I've built it from scratch, from the ground up. And I think people bring the bikes to me because I am very meticulous, I'm very, very um, 
careful at building bikes and do a really good job and I like everything to look absolutely 100% when it leaves here. Probably saw my first piston when I was maybe 12 years old. I started racing when I was 10. I started riding when I was 10 but I did trials but you know I remember my dad showing me how to um, basically rebuild a top end on a two stroke when I was probably in my early teens. If I hadn't have started the visa process, uh, when Walter Kolbach told me, you need to start the visa process today, like otherwise you're not going to have your visas in time, I gave myself some sporty timescales. I mean, I decided in December I was going on this trip and I set a leave date of the end of April and it was like it's four months to get everything sorted. 16 hours later, Lyndon pauses for a brief sleep break. My favourite tool, uh, oh yeah, this is a really special tool, wait one moment. 